Hey guys, in this video we're going to go over how to use the Jupyter Notebook. We're going to start off with the basics and then by the end of the video you'll be able to use more advanced stuff like magic methods and keyboard shortcuts. So if you don't know what a Jupyter Notebook is, it's basically a way to uh, it allows you to share code and also run it interactively. So it's good for both beginners who are just trying to debug their code while they're learning and also more advanced users like data scientists, machine learning researchers who want to share the results with other people. So an example of what you can do with a Jupyter Notebook is here. Uh, it's a notebook that runs code to do a deep learning style transfer. So if we look here, it'd be pretty boring if you just looked at all this code and it had some comments. You really wouldn't understand fully what it was doing. But thanks to the Jupyter Notebook, we can see the results directly in the notebook of what's happening. So this is the base image. And then if we scroll down after they run the neural network on it, we can see the transformation. So they take this uh, starry night, it's a pretty famous image, and they place that over the top of this image of a bird and then you can see the end result right here. So that's an example of a more advanced use case for Jupyter. Uh, for now, we're just gonna start off with the basics. So my assumption is that you already have Anaconda or Python and Jupyter installed. If you don't, you can check out my previous video where we went over how to install Anaconda. Uh, once you have that done, we're gonna go down here and you're just gonna wanna open up your Anaconda prompt once you have that, we're going to go and just put in Jupyter Notebook. And that'll start up the server and our kernel, and it'll pop open our homepage for Jupyter. So from here, you can either open up, if you have a pre-made notebook that you've already worked on, they'd show up in here. Otherwise, we can just go over to New, and we're going to want a new notebook. So Python 3. And now we're at our basically the new fresh notebook. So the first thing we're probably going to want to do is change the title of our notebook. This is basically, this will be what file name it's saved under. So you're going to want to make sure it's fairly unique so you know exactly which notebook you're working with. Uh, we'll just call it tutorial and then click rename. And if we go back to our home page here we can see that this has now changed to tutorial. And we can also see, because it's active, we can see that it's green. So when you're done with Jupyter, generally when you're done working with a notebook, you can either shut it down, uh, you can also delete it, duplicate it, whatever. But you wanna make sure when you're done, you shut it down at the very least so that it's not wasting resources having this thing running. So going back to our notebook, the first thing uh, is we're gonna wanna just run our first code. So if we just put print and we put Jupyter and then we can run it uh, up here or you can also hold shift and enter and that'll also run your code. But seeing it we can see the output here and we can also see which is important that we have this number one here because uh, what's different about Jupyter is that you don't have to run your code sequentially like you would in a normal Python file you can run, if you wanted to, you could run this first and then up above you could run this and you'd get errors because uh, if you have a variable down here that you're expecting to have a value, it can get messed up because you're running this first. So to see an example of that in action, we can make a variable here. Uh, let's call it name. And then we can add a new cell below. And if we try to run this variable, if we try to run this cell and print off this variable before we run this, we can see we get an error. So this is something you basically you won't see it with a normal Python script because it only runs sequentially. So this is a problem you need to look out for if you uh, are using Jupyter because now we can see if we run this and then we run this again, we can see that the error is gone. If you do run the, one of those errors and you can't quite figure out why you're getting weird results, if you have a ton of cells and you can't see where it got out of order, one thing you can do is come up here to kernel and click restart and clear output. And then if you click that, you can see it basically, it clears all this out and then you can just start over uh, from scratch and you can just run these in order and that'll take care of that problem. 
So next up, we're going to take a look at our toolbar, which gives us a bunch of different functions for our cell, or for our cells and our notebook and all that. So first up here is save and checkpoint. So if we click that, we can see we get a, it saves up here, and then we can go into our file section, and we get this revert to checkpoint. So basically what that allows you to do is, as you would expect, you can basically roll back your code to the last time you saved it. So if you mess something up or whatever, you can always go back to that last save checkpoint. Up here we have uh, add a cell, which is pretty obvious and self-explanatory. We can also cut cells, so if you click on it, and you can also uh, multi-select. If you hold shift, you can multi-select, so then you could cut it, uh, click wherever here, and then you can paste those cells below. So you can move your cells around like that. You can also do uh, just a single cell. You can move them up like that. Then uh, you have copy, which is the same thing. If you just want to copy, you can multi-select or just one, and you can paste it there. We have our run our code. We have interrupt the kernel. Uh, we kind of went over the resetting the kernel. And then you can do finally this is it'll reset your kernel and it'll run all your code sequentially. Next up, we're going to take a look at our menu bar up above here. So for file, the big things are going to be your save as or save and checkpoint. If you don't want to do, if you don't want to have to go click over here and do that, you can also use control S to save. Uh, but for the most part, uh, you're not going to be doing much with the file other than maybe if you want to export something you can export as a notebook or you can also do a Python file or HTML if you want to just show it as a static page with all your results you can also do that uh, and edit you're probably not going to use this much because pretty much all these functions up in the edit you can either do with your toolbar or they can be done with uh, keyboard shortcuts as I'll be going over in a little bit view you can toggle your header bar uh, the toolbar if you don't want those visible you can also do line numbers so if you want to have these each cell show you how many lines of code are there uh, you can do that but for now we're going to drop that insert is another one where uh, you can insert cells above and below but for the most part you're either going to be using the toolbar or keyboard shortcuts here you get uh, you can this is you'll use this a little bit where you can have a lot more control over how the cells run so you can either run all of them you can do below or above where you're selected uh, that gives you a little bit of kind of versatility over how you want that to happen and here again we kind of click we went over uh, this a little bit but for the most part you can do restart which will leave your results down here and it'll save the ordering of how they've run or you can do restart and clear which will do uh, get away with get away get rid of everything widgets is some more advanced stuff you can uh, use JavaScript widgets and stuff if you want some custom functionality that's not built into uh, Jupyter by default and help is another uh, pretty useful thing because you can always if you don't know how to do something if you think there's a better way to do it you can always draw up uh, your keyboard shortcuts and stuff like that and it's all right there so you don't have to memorize it you can just pull that up one other thing to keep in mind is that if we look over here we can see Python 3 this is basically showing you which environment you're using so if we go down to our any kind of prompt we can see we're just using the base and if you know anything about Anaconda or Python you'll know that you can make various environments uh, with those so that means uh, if you want to use for a separate project you're using certain libraries you can import those install them and then you'll have those available and you can select a different kernel uh, see so you can go here and change so if you have multiple kernels there it'll detect that and you'll be able to see them here listed and then you can just change that kernel and then you'll be able to import whichever library you want to use. So we've kind of gone over all of our various uh, toolbars up here. Next we're going to look into how we can 
uh, use different types of cells. So right now we've just gone over our code modules, but we can also see uh, we have our markdown here. So that's another thing that uh, is pretty useful. So if we insert a cell here, we can change it from code to markdown. And we can show right here, uh, we can show how to do a header. Uh, we can do a code, we can do back ticks. You can make a code section. You can also do uh, with dashes, you can make some uh, lists and bullet marks and stuff like that. So if you do these, now if we run it, we can see that it gives us this uh, different formatting. So we're not going to go into a bunch of markdown. That's a whole separate thing you can look up. But what this is useful for is kind of labeling your, uh, your code or giving a description of what's going on or if you want to just make it, uh, give it some styling. That's what these markdown cells are pretty good for. So we've gone over most of the basic stuff. The next few things we have to cover are going to be uh, running shell commands directly in our notebook, some magic methods, and then keyboard shortcuts. So first up, we're going to add a new cell. And if you want to run a shell command directly, all you have to do is add this exclamation point there. And then you can just run it uh, right from here. So if we click, if we run that, we can see that it just prints that out directly. So that can be really useful. If you want to install something, you could do, uh, you could do like a pip install it and just do it directly there. Uh, there's a lot of different stuff that's a really useful feature to be able to just use it right inside our notebook. Next up, we're going to look at magic methods, which are basically built in functions that are specific to Jupyter Notebook. So if you want a list of all the different ones you can use, you can just do ls magic and then run the cell and you get a big list of all the various things. Uh, some of the big ones that are useful are going to be percent sign then ls if you want to list the files in your current uh, directory you can also do pwd and it'll give you the present uh, directory you're working out of uh, another really useful one is if you do a double percent and time it you can then do a multi-line so you can do a for loop uh, and then it'll print off how long it took that to run so it'll give you an exact idea like if you're trying to improve the performance of a function you can test it out using this so if we run it we can go scroll down here and it'll give us it'll tell us how long it took per loop and all that so if you're working on something where you need to test your performance this is a useful little magic method that's built into Jupyter some other ones that uh, are pretty cool are HTML. This would allow you, if you want to embed like a YouTube video or all sorts of different stuff, you can paste that in there underneath and it'll make it functional inside the Jupyter Notebook. So the last thing we're going to go over in this tutorial is going to be our keyboard shortcuts. So one thing you need to make sure before you try using these is you can see the difference here between uh, it's green, this box, if we click out here it goes to blue and that's going to be the difference between edit mode which is where you're going to type inside the cell and command mode so once we're in the blue if we click just the h tab it'll pull up our help menu so that's the first little shortcut so you don't have to scroll up every time to click on your help menu you can just click h uh, some big ones are if you click a it'll add a cell above if you click b it'll add a cell below the current cell that you have selected. Uh, another one is going to be if you double tap D, if you hit D twice, it'll delete the, it'll delete your cell. If you click C, you can copy a cell and then click V, it'll paste it. Uh, it's pretty much the same as like you'd use in Word. So if you also, if you just want to cut it, you can go and click on it, click X, it'll disappear. And then wherever you click V at, it'll paste it below. Uh, and that's basically, those are for me, those are my most used uh, 
shortcuts. There's a lot of them. If you click H, you can obviously see there's a ton of different ones, but for the most part, I keep it simple and just stick to those. So moving beyond the basics that we've covered in this tutorial, the best thing to do is just going to be working with Jupyter Notebook, doing different programs, writing code in it, and just finding out what works for you. Another good thing you can do is if you just Google GitHub IPython examples, what you'll find is there's an older version you want, the one that says 2019, and if you click on this, it's basically, it's the official Jupyter uh, GitHub repository and then what they just have a ton of different uh, like collection of IPython notebooks so this is really good for just seeing how other people with more experience use these things seeing what's possible with them that kind of thing but for this video that's basically all I'm gonna cover if you have any questions feel free to ask in the comments below uh, also, it's a big help if you hit thumbs up and give this video a like and also subscribe. Uh, feel free also to leave some suggestions if you have any uh, topics or content you'd want me to cover in the future. Uh, also, feel free to give a suggestion below. Thanks.